Mm. And that, I think, is one of the most beautiful muscles that an entrepreneur gains. Yeah. Um, things go wrong all the time. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah, you pivot, you bounce back. You're just like, okay, how, what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, are we starting? Yeah, we can pull. So we'll play to 200. Seven, Seven yup. We'll have a boneyard. Big six will play. Mm -hmm. um, um, I have seven. Let's see, we can. If you want to rewash, if you have four doubles, we're, you're more than welcome to. I think I'm okay. All right, all right, that's cool. All right. All right I got big six. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you've been in business what almost a year? Yeah, ten ten months. Um, I feel like one of those like parents who keeps like saying the exact month of how old their child is for real 18 months yo it's, like, it's okay. a baby though but i'm like 10 months and yeah. three days can yeah. you believe yeah. it yeah yeah um what was it like getting to the point where you were opening like where is there a lot of like crossing the t's dotting the i's and or is it just like yo it, this is time which is you mean just... by the time i actually secured this location yeah, yeah. um no i think you know, we set signed the we got the keys at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. We were gonna open in like eight, March or April after a brief remodel, uh, and then we were like, oh, we'll just wait for this like COVID thing to pass. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> yeah. So we like we put off opening for two months, and then I think Corey and I just looked at each other and we were like, we just have to open, and we just picked like it was like the last weekend in June, and we were like, let's just open this weekend, and yeah. um, we just had to kind of move forward. And it's just been hit the ground running as soon as it opened. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. That's so cool. much stuff was going like, you know, we didn't have hardly anything in the POS and we were really just kind of doing it as we went along. Yeah. Um, I mean, da, 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 you've da, da. been around a lot of like businesses being started, particularly like be because of your family. And we could talk about that. But um, do you feel I like that? Way? Or do I have to? Yeah. Answer, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're good. Um, but being able to um, open your business during a pandemic, do you feel like your experiences, like watching your parents and your grandparents have their own businesses made it a little mm -hmm. bit easier to do it during this time? Or was it just like, I have to because I have so much riding on this? Um, both. I mean, y you've, you've seen this journey for me, so you've seen how many obstacles. This is my third lease. Yep. I remember and that. then once the pandemic started, um, I definitely like uh, I had just got laid off of Red Bay because mm -hmm. uh, I was the events manager. No yeah. need for events. Yeah. And I was so busy. I just I had to just like I just had to cry in my living room yeah. and just had to let it out. And then I was like, and then my business and then I just my small business loan got and I just started like those laugh cries, you know, yeah. where you're just sort of like, like this is <laughs> hysterical. I was yeah. like, God, do you not are you do you not want me to do this? Yeah. Like a global pandemic yeah. now that I'm like this close to opening the doors and it yeah. was just like one of those laugh cries. Um and then, you know, you just push push forward. Yeah. How did you how did you stay persistent? Because you it's, it was a journey to get to the point where you opened, right? Like the yeah. lease is falling through the locations that you wanted, not panning out the way yeah. you wanted them to. Mm -hmm. um, and you had some like really beautiful locations set yeah. in stone. Um, but how Just did you maintain that developers. perseverance? Um, by I think like letting it rest sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely have learned to trust my gut. Like you just can't force it. Yeah. You just can't force it. And when it's not lining up, um, I would just let it go to the back burner yeah. and like still be thinking about it still um still letting myself stay open to opportunities when i saw them but i mm -hmm. just you know i could also just like not push for it so much yeah and i was just like let me just see what happens if i yeah i just had to like pause yeah because mm -hmm. in initially when you started you were going to open something with a partner and then you mm -hmm. went on it on your own, mm -hmm. and then you opened up Alkali, which yeah. is the establishment we're in. Mm -hmm. How did you and Corey end up connecting to say, "Hey, let's 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 build this together"? Um, that was Raquel, my my stepmom's idea. 
and she was like, you know, you and Corey, she was like, I could see the, I could see the connection that you guys should do this because he was doing tea and really wanted to kind of do some sort of tea shop and mm -hmm. I wanted to do, you know, spirits and um, so it was her idea and then I think I just saw him in passing one time and I was like, hey, do you want to like do this business with me? Yeah. And he was into it and I mean, we, we did a lot of different scenarios. We were like, you remember sitcoms when like the siblings would get into a fight and draw the tape down the center yeah. of the room? Yeah, like this yeah. is mine. Yeah, this That's is yours. yours. <laughs> and we yeah. had this concept of doing the store like that. Yeah. Like kind of have like these really two different, like still one business and one kind of vibe. But yeah. like it was like, this will be this tea side yeah. and I'm going to have like the spirit side. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but that was going to be at a different location. So when it, when it ended up being here, the concept kind of changed too because this was just the dream location and you know, you, you just change yeah. plans. For I, I, I love that y'all work together. One, because we all work together mm -hmm. at Red Day um, Coffee and being able to work with the both of you was, I think for me, um, a huge um, part of like my development as an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. we were all working together in this startup that is now flourishing. Um, but yeah, we would always talk about business and we had um, Red Bay as kind of like the incubator for us to be mm -hmm. able to test out a lot of our ideas. And so now you and Corey together working together um, with this business is really dope because it's like, oh, this is like five years ago, we mm -hmm. were all sitting in a coffee roastery. Now we're sitting in a bottle shop and like, it seems like things are starting to sprout up for all of us where it's like yeah. you're doing this i'm working on this it's 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 really cool to see all of us manifesting in different yeah. ways and it's dope that two people that i've built friendships with are now working together yeah. yeah yeah it's a really wonderful partnership that's sprung out of it i think it like you know corey and i i interviewed corey when he was um not auditioning, interviewing for the one of my dad's cafes. And then he became my boss then later when I went to work at Red Bay. So I, I like that we've had this power dynamic that yeah. has like shifted a few yeah. times. Yeah. Um, and then too, to go into business with somebody that like I've known for a long time. I've known in a business setting too. Yeah. They're my homie, but they're not my best friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a nice to be in partnership with a man too, because I'm, I'm surrounded by all these incredible women all the time, but it mm. is different energy. Yeah. Um, and that's been really interesting. Yeah. Partnerships. Yeah. That could be a whole nother segment of yeah. your And like <laughs> what y'all represent, like, yeah, the partnership for sure, like what that and collaboration looks like and mm -hmm. the, the, the level setting of ego that you have to kind of have in order to like, manifest ideas together yeah but I mean for what you guys are creating right now as people of color mm -hmm. um, in a space that is predominantly white if I'm if I'm wrong you this can correct not even this neighborhood but it's just the oh, industry that y'all yeah, work yeah. within right mm -hmm. having a, a bottle um, a bottle shop that offers spirits and wine beverage shop, beverage shop yeah. um, a beverage shop that offers you know spirits and wines like I don't think too many people of color are operating in this space that way. I mean, yes and no. A lot of people of color own liquor stores. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that is something that um, that I am reminded of or yeah. think about. That's, right? that's true. Um, By the way, Tim. Nice. Tim. But yes, it's a different um, yeah. maybe approach this one. Maybe it's the, the fact that you when you walk into... That was Tim? That was 10, yep. Okay. Oh, can I um, get 15, Zach? Yep, 15. Nice. All right. Um, but maybe it's when I think of a liquor store yeah. and the, the patronage mm -hmm. that you have in a liquor store, it's normally you grab a bottle, you grab maybe some snacks, and you walk out. I think when I walk into your establishment, like I feel like I'm being educated on the things that I'm, I'm consuming, like the bottle of wine we're drinking, right? Yeah. It's, there's a level of curation that goes into that that yeah. takes it one step removed from a liquor store that For sure. I don't associate with a liquor store. So yeah. when I think of the spaces like that where it's like, oh, I'm walking in and somebody is an expert in 
something like a sommelier or mm -hmm. um, a mixologist, like that education usually is found in spaces like this and those mm -hmm. spaces are not typically run and owned by people of color that yeah. I've like I've yeah. inhabited. Mm -hmm. Like these kind of lifestyle. Yeah, a lifestyle. Like you guys have a lifestyle high, brand. Highly curated spaces. I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's that's powerful because mm -hmm. I think when I walk into any other establishment, I'm kind of looking for that similar type of attention mm -hmm. because um, it's become custom to me, like mm -hmm. from the from the coffee shop. I mean, from being at Red Bay and like the level of attention to detail and like making sure that everything is well presented and that we're doing things with intention. That feels it feels like that's a, this is an extension of that, and what, so I look for that. What makes you walk into a space, and how like how I'm I'm thinking about this often, yeah. like how. How do you want to feel or, or what signifiers do you look into when you walk into a space? Um, spatial design is always a piece of it. And I want to talk about spatial design, not just like the location, but like mm -hmm. how things are set up and presented. Um, the warmth of the people, mm -hmm. like that's, that's huge for me. If I'm not able to meet you um, at a person to person level and it's simply a transaction, I may not want to go back. Um, mm -hmm. So I look at that. Um, and I think for me, I think I'm in a unique situation where I have um, personal relationships with a lot of the people that own the spaces that I, that I support. So like you and Corey, I've, I have a friendship with you, but I also really appreciate the way that you've, you've created your business and I want to support that. Um, speaking of like local, I like to know like the people that I'm supporting. So that, that's the type of thing that I'm looking at. I'm not just looking to like walk into a big box and say, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm buying this because I need it. It's like, I want to know that I'm supporting the commerce that's providing the economy that I live within and mm -hmm. like wanting to support more businesses like that, especially if they're businesses where the people look like me and share the same value system as me. Mm -hmm. Like I want to support those type of businesses. So I'm always curious to find those type of businesses. Have you been to uh, Aisha Curry's? store no i haven't no? i passed by is do that know, do you know what she sells it's furniture right and i don't know I, home i'm goods? really curious i i believe it's called sweet july is sweet that june is it right sweet around August. the corner from kingston 11. yeah okay yeah. yeah so i passed by the other week and it's beautiful yeah no, um, i saw a lot of like linen hanging in the window and i was like what is this and yeah i was like oh that's how you should cruise spot I like it, and I like the fact that, oh, you got me pulling now. Um, ah. uh, let's see. All right. Um, I like the, the fact that folks like ourselves are opening businesses and creating um, like home good furnishings, because that's the space that I'm in. Like, mm, mm -hmm. I'm not so much into buying sneakers like I used to be in my 20s. Now it's like, oh, that's a really cool rug. I'm trying to cop that. And I mean, that's, Comfort. yeah, it's like <laughs> thinking about lifestyle. My lifestyle yeah. is changing. And so yeah. I went, and because we've been in a, in a pandemic home all the at home time. all the time, yeah. like if I do I have like, no. um, time being spent at home and I, I do want to host like a friend or family, mm. I want the space to be comfortable for them. So I would like to like support businesses that offer that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think it's tight that she's, been able to create a create a business like that. <laughs> you still pulling? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. Oh, is that something now? Yes, that's fifteen. There you go. Um. I mean, so on that note of like entrepreneurs like Ayesha Curry, like your family, mm. you like you, I think every single person that I know within your family is an entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's wild like it's the family business <laughs> yeah entrepreneurship is the family it's business the fa absolutely um yeah. who was the first person that you knew as an entrepreneur in your family um my grandmother virgie who was my mother's mother um and she had a hot dog cart and we would she lived Ten. um she lives on a why am i blinking on a street jamestown Okay. And Giants games, when they were at um, Candlestick, mm -hmm. all the traffic would just be 
stuck in front of her house. And I think she was like really hard up and like she was like, hold on, I have this idea. And then she like bought it like just I think on a whim and then just was like making a killing it. And she would just like push it right out of her garage and wow. set up this hot dog cart and then she would take it to other parks and stuff like that. Um, and then eventually she opened up a daycare and a school and bought buildings and um, very impressive. Especially woman. at that time, right? Yeah, it's just like a black woman opening a business mm -hmm. in San Francisco. In San Francisco yeah. during presumably like the civil rights era. No, it wasn't that long ago. No, it wasn't? No, this is like I was alive. Oh, you were alive. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is like in, in the eighties. The early nineties. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then moms um, became an entrepreneur. Moms, is a bomb entrepreneur. Yeah, and her husband, my stepdad, and um, he's a music producer. She does a lot of more film. Um, my aunt, her younger sister, is um, an influencer, a very fitness. successful one. <laughs> no, that's her twin. Her, <laughs> that's twin, her, twin, is, oh, wow. her twin does fitness. <laughs> Leslie's an uh, influencer. Wow. Um, and then on my dad's side, you have my dad, Red mm -hmm. Bay, and his wife, Raquel, who does uh, Red Bay and Alan Wood and all power to the people mm -hmm. and then my dad's sister who does lotus moon mm -hmm. i'm leaving somebody out karina because karina who is now on that entrepreneur path mm -hmm. I, there's another one i'm leaving out i know it but yes fam, that's this is a family business for sure yeah I mean, my grandmother has a gallery now too my dad's mom yeah so Thinking about that, like, was that always in the back of your head that that was the path that you were going to take? Um, like Jessica, young Jessica. No, 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 no. Because I, I really did not like it for my parents. I remember I told my dad one day, I was like, can't you just get a job where you have a briefcase and you go to work <laughs> and then you come home? I just want you to be regular. Yeah. And um, because the hours are, you know, it's you never know yeah. Yeah, you're when you're going to be paid or when you're going to work. I mean, hopefully that's not always it, but yeah. that's what it felt like. But um, you're on the clock 24-7. Yeah. Um, and it's just as a kid, I just wanted to be around my parents all the time, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I wanted, I wanted to be very, like, average and normal mm -hmm. business lady. Like, just like a business job, you know? Yeah. It was like that off where you work into an office or yeah. something. Yeah. Or I went to be a veterinarian. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But then you chose the life where you're like, I may not sleep all the time. Well, <laughs> no, I had a lemonade stand <laughs> <laughs> when I was like eight, I think, because I was, I lived, we lived on MLK and Ashby, right mm -hmm. between like the Thai Temple and the, uh, and the Ashby Flea Market. Yep. So, so much traffic and we had a lemon yeah. tree in the backyard. And so I set up this uh, lemonade stand one day, which people just thought was adorable. Mm -hmm. um, and I made $60 on my first weekend. When, hey. And when you're like nine or 10, yep. $60 feels like so much Yo. money. And it was open in like the 90s. So yeah, and you have Ashley Flea Market. So you're like, I got money for candy oh, and everything. So much those there. pop things, everything. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm really hoping I could find a photo of that because that's, like, that's like a very I think about that day a lot because it's very much of like how it started and how it's going. Yeah, yeah. yeah and now you're serving beverages. Yeah, and I was always <laughs> like mixing potions mm -hmm. and like doing a lot of like witchy stuff. So I this feels for sure like where I was headed, even if I didn't know it. That's that's yeah. hella funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I think about the first entrepreneurial gig I had was a lemonade stand. I had a, was it? We had a family friend across the street, our neighbor. Um, they had a lemon tree, and they would just bring us lemons. Yeah. And my dad one day was like, y'all need to get outside. Like, we'd play yeah. outside, but we'd play a lot of video games. He's like, "Yeah, you're going to take these bag of lemons, and you're going to sell them on the street. And we lived on a street with, like, kids and families, so... Mm -hmm. We were selling it for like 25 cents. And I think I didn't make $60. I probably made $20 <laughs> and I was happy with that because yeah. I was able to buy like a pog or <laughs> buy some sour, sour ropes. Yeah. But it was, it was that that I think inspired me to, to think of, to be an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. like to start my own thing to know like, yes, I could be a business person. Like it was expected for me to, you know, 
pursue college and mm -hmm. even though I didn't know what I really wanted to do until I got to college mm -hmm. um, but it was just like just having those those expectations but also knowing in the back of my head like I could pursue something creatively if I wanted to mm -hmm. um, because I had that experience running my own business and now we're here um, so not so much so I mean we're drinking a beverage so <laughs> I guess like, <laughs> but like being able to start something like yeah. um, that was my first experience so I totally relate to that um, I know you have some role models as entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and they don't have to be family, but is there somebody that said, I know, I think in my head, I know of one person and who are you thinking of? I think Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I think Beyonce is one. Oh my God. Oh, you know, I really, I wanted to like not be so predictable as to talk about Beyonce <laughs> in our, uh, in our talk here today, but since you brought it up. <laughs> We could talk about it for a little okay. bit. Okay. And she actually came up at dinner the other night, not in person, but <laughs> <laughs> because somebody was like, oh, like, who do you, who are you a bigger fan of or something? And I said, you know, I think we were talking about Rihanna and okay. Beyonce, not that we can ever compare those queens. Um, but I was like, you know what, if I was to hang out like on a Friday night, definitely want to go out with Rihanna. Definitely. Lunch, lunch meeting, date? Yeah. I'm, I want to sit down with Beyonce all day. Totally. Um, and I am like such a huge fan of her like music and it's fun and yeah. I braided my hair inspired by her this weekend. Um, but her business acumen is something that she just really does not get enough props for. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like one of the things I find most impressive about her. Yeah. Um, that Netflix Coachella deal I think was probably one of like uh, one of the best deals of like that year or whatever yeah. just like just really so like one of a kind and, and that and people don't talk about that yeah. and they don't know about that yeah. and also just like seeing how um, I feel like she definitely did what she had to do to get where she is yeah do yeah you know what I mean yeah, and now I mean. now that she's there she's like okay yeah the little girl <laughs> from star search yeah who had entrepreneurs guiding her along the yeah. way and now she takes all of those mm -hmm. pieces of knowledge and then is now manifesting it. And yeah, I think yeah. she definitely is on the same level as her husband in terms of like business acumen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're a power couple. <laughs> if there was ever to be to find a power couple, like they kind of set the, they set the bar for that. Um, Absolutely. And I heard I they think, just bought DMX's masters. Yeah. That's what I heard kids, and yeah. give it to the kids. That, that's beautiful. I think. Yeah, and the fact that they, they continue to play the game and, and make sh make strides for change within the game, right? Yeah. Like, we're going to buy someone's masters or mm -hmm. if we are going to participate in collaboration with the NFL or any one of these big entities, mm -hmm. we are going to at least maintain some creative control, but mm -hmm. also we're going to look for ways to make some type of social impact yeah. along the way. And I think people criticize them a lot because they see the dollar amounts, but like right. there's other areas, like they're not playing the game the same way. And you know, we don't know every single detail, but um, yeah. You could also be mission driven and make a profit. Like totally. the two are not mutually exclusive, which yeah. I think is another thing that yeah. people, it's helpful to shift yeah. the thinking around yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and of course they are also not like my beacons of everything no. do you know what i mean I, totally. I think that we've had plenty really, of conversations right, about that, yeah right? like they are really smart uh and beautiful people and 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 she just changed so much for me yeah. especially coming up um and yeah i think about her a lot I, th I think one day i was like so busy here and i was so tired mm -hmm. and my friend was like well i was like there's just not enough time in the day and she was like you have the same amount of hours in the day as beyonce does Ooh. and i was just like oh that's so that's deep. Long. Yeah. That's like, deep. Yeah. Our days are the same in yeah. terms of like length. Yeah. So that, that that's so true. So do you do you find yourself like tapping into some of like the things you're seeing her doing in in the way that you operate this business? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know what she does. She's such a private person. No, but, but I think in terms of like aesthetic, you. You, you have a very keen eye on that mm. and how you present things, like mm -hmm. putting together um, the presentation that mm -hmm. is this business. I know you and Corey do that in collaboration, yeah. but I know that 
knowing you in, ta- in terms sure. of the design and like her aesthetic and like I think do you see like parallels where you're like oh I might try to take something from like an RV Ivy Park release that might be <laughs> <laughs> no I don't do that I think I aesthetics I'm that's still something I'm I do spend a lot of time um, looking for inspiration uh, around design and retail mm-hmm. design and also, retail design is interesting too because it's not it's very different than clothing too mm-hmm. right because you're always trying to invite people in mm-hmm. and so it has this marketing element to mm-hmm. it um, but just to finish that thought I do take inspiration for people like her you know who I've been thinking about too is RuPaul um, oh. because I was meeting with our marketing um, person and another mentor of mine and mm-hmm. Something that's been really difficult on this entrepreneur path is this um, this Instagram-ness of it all. Yeah. And really having to so closely identify, like your brand and you are supposed to just be like all yeah. intertwined. Yeah. Um, and that feels really uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Um, I, I'm realizing I'm more of an introvert as much as I love people and, and I feel like I'm a personal, personable person. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel actually kind of private. I see people all the time. So like, I don't want to, I feel like we we're yeah. just talking about this, like do it more. Yeah. And, um, and then to put that out into the world for people to consume feels strange. Um, I think about AOC who I think does it amazing Mm -hmm. but she's very on all the time and I think it really works for her as a politician Um, so I've been trying to think about people who you feel like you really know them Mm -hmm. but you actually don't know anything about them yeah and RuPaul I think is one of those really amazing people because you know his values you know his phrases Mm -hmm. um, super successful yeah but you actually don't know much about his private life yeah I do because I research yeah (laughs) I think yeah there's there there is a a a sometimes a need to be a like your your brand is almost representing you who you are yeah and I think people get that misconstrued many times right for sure why are you so goofy like I'll I'll just I I think people don't know how goofy I am but Mm. when they see me it's like oh it's sneakers and shoes but it's like no no, I kind of like just playing dominoes and right. chilling but um, I mean even I asked you how many shoes you yeah. have I was just like <laughs> I'm like yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah I, I could see Is that it my turn I'm sorry yeah it's your turn but yeah no we, we're having a great conversation so don't apologize um, but yeah like this need for us as outsiders to sometimes want to know more about mm-hmm. the people and like us as the people who are creators not necessarily wanting to let everybody into everything but like mm-hmm. creating um, some some yes. some healthy boundary Ten. yeah um, what are what are yours um, mine are I I'm, I'm working on that mm-hmm. I'm working on separating my personal brand from what I'm working on mm. but I'm also finding that my brand that I'm creating is starting to represent more of who I am mm-hmm. and I'm becoming less focused on the John L. C. on being presented to the world like I like being able to create things mm-hmm. and knowing that the things that I'm creating are going to represent me so focus I, I, I'm starting to focus less on needing to to showcase my lifestyle like Right. I'm I, like something like this. Like, it's much more important for me to share this story through my business and my brand versus having to share it through gotcha. John L. Sion's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. brand. Because at the end of the day, what I'm working towards is building uplifters, and I I had to like separate the two. Like, to get to this point, I had to let go of a lot of things that I was working on, mm. and so like now I'm starting to be better at consolidating. Um, the things and compartmentalizing them in in segments so that I can focus better. Um, so like with um, things that I'm working on, I I tend to put that more on uplifters, mm-hmm. and then I will share from uplifters onto my personal. So it because I mm-hmm. I recognize that 
the people that I'm connected to personally yeah. like what I'm doing, but I also don't want to undersell the brand that I'm creating. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's... Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're figuring it out yeah. and just like shifting it. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a huge yeah. shift. It's, yeah. it's been one of the, 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 the things that I've been working on most in the last year mm -hmm. is being able to not be associated with so many things because I think that then starts to make everybody people from the outside see mm -hmm. it as like you're part of this you're part of that and I was like well I think you're, you keep it pretty curated yeah. I don't feel like it's this big snapshot yeah. into your life yeah so I've been thinking about like for instance I don't 15. do one of my boundaries was like I don't probably post any pictures from inside of my house mm -hmm. um, I decided not to have a personal Instagram mm. which is um, which was like I think it was like giving me anxiety. Yeah. Um, and it's like one of those things I shut down when I had called out that um, chef for sexual harassment. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, you really had to like shut it down. Um, and then I just could never, I couldn't really like bring myself to really start it up again. And, yeah. and as much as I feel like I needed it for business, but then I'm like, okay, my business just has one. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm on the computer too much anyway. So yeah. I was like, okay, maybe I just don't need this. One. Yeah. Um, I'm working to where you're getting. I'm just curious yeah. on like what, like, yeah, yeah kind no, of what I, kind of boundaries people are, yeah, are trying to Yeah, much set. more, much more shutting down. Like last year, I closed down my Facebook. Mm. Um, and that has been, I think, a huge um, benefit in my personal life and my mental yeah. health. Like not being consumed by every single thought that every person I'm connected to has. Right. Um, and now being able to kind of just sit with what I'm thinking about mm. and like, being able to have a conversation with somebody without having to be like, oh, I read your, your thoughts on this. Let me have a conversation with you about it. Right. Like, I'm just meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think about, as I'm growing Uplifters, um, being able to focus my complete attention on that. And in terms of social media and marketing, being able to shut down my my personal page and mm -hmm. just fo completely focus on uplifters i think there's something to be said about that yeah um, i've been um and i try not to be on it too much but mm -hmm. i try to at least understand um instagram in terms of how it works as a business tool mm -hmm. um, but i was scrolling through and i saw a friend that posted something just like really great and um and then I just like called her and told her that I liked the photo. That's I was just tight. like, hey, I really like this, yeah. but I just wanted to tell her. Um, this may be getting off topic, but do you feel that, is there a, a weight that you feel about like liking people's things and reposting? I've been seeing some of that play out in some friendships um, Interesting. lately. Um, yeah. I mean, just like between folks that I know and like it's like a whole nother level of like, yeah. New conflict that I've seen arise. With I do. I would say maybe not a sense. Maybe a sense of not a sense of pressure, but I do. I do get mad <laughs> at social media when, like, it's not being presented to me, and then I find it a couple of days later that my friend posted something. But now that it's you know the algorithms are set to whatever mm -hmm. they want to show you, like I'll be like, oh, they posted that two days ago, and I feel bad that I haven't liked it. Like, like liked it. Yeah, that I actually yeah. didn't like. Feel bad. I, I yeah. feel bad that I didn't like. Oh, I felt yeah. like I didn't support them, but it's also oh, okay. like I had no control of what was going to be presented to me. Even though yeah. I'm following them, yeah. but like there is and like that a is sense a level of, of like support, isn't yeah. it? To, to like someone's photos. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I've I've been just like disengaging and disengaging, but maybe yeah. I should learn to engage in another way. Yeah, I mean, it's a uh, like a parallel to dominoes, like. Uh, learning not to personalize everything like mm. especially with like social media yeah. um i can't personalize what somebody else is doing on there um especially if i know i have a different relationship with them off off of that yeah. so like i think we all have someone that's probably really well known on social media mm. and like they present to the world in a certain way but when you're behind closed doors with them mm -hmm. or in in more intimate spaces with them they're completely different and so I, mm. I think I've had some proximity to that so mm. I try not to but I, it's hard not to like feel a personal connection to something when 
you see it being posted and you're like, I want that person to know that I'm here, especially yeah. when we've been disconnected for so long. Yeah. Um, but in, in like in, in dominoes, like, you know, I find myself wanting to, when I'm playing with like multiple opponents, like sometimes you might support another opponent in order to like get that other person off. Yeah. And it's nothing against that other person, but it's simply because they're like winning and mm -hmm. the game is competitive, but it's nothing personal. It's like, yeah. um, but I, I have found like in friendships where we're playing dominoes that sometimes it can feel personal. Oh, and it's interesting. Like, so, you know, like I think there's... Do you play dominoes with a strategy? Yes. Yes. Um, Maybe you don't want to share that. I, I, I won't share all of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. I think... Yeah. It depends on the person um, mm. who I'm playing, my opponents. Um, they, I try to look at behaviors. Mm. Like, you know, there are people, there are tell signs, like someone who likes to score, someone who likes to, maybe not likes to, but someone who doesn't pay attention mm. and is making uh, decisions and playing dominoes that I wouldn't play, knowing that it's going to benefit the other person, the other opponents. Right. Um, so, yeah. Like, I, I, I adjust my strategy based on that. Interesting. Yeah. But I think you do that. You're making those assessments Yeah. at all, all points in time, right? I th yeah. I mean, I think when I play dominoes, I, I definitely have gotten frustrated when I feel like people drag the board down. Mm -hmm. And I, I am always like, I rather just, I'm a all ships rise with a high tide kind yeah. of yeah. approach. I think yeah. I take that approach to like my business and dominoes. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, fine. If you're scoring, I'm also going to score. Okay. If nobody's going like a uh, locked board or two <laughs> points on the board, that's so boring. And then we just like no. keep going around with it so, so. And I'm yeah. like, I'd rather sacrifice a few things to get it up. But everybody starts playing like yeah. that, right? When like one person does it and another person yeah. does it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's interesting. And I'm playing with the same folks, maybe. That, that's that's interesting. That strategy and like yeah. in, in, in entrepreneurship, like there's this competitiveness, right? Like where it's yeah. like, I need to win, but sometimes the I need to win comes at the expense of somebody else losing. Like from what it sounds mm -hmm. like, it's like, yo, let's run it up, and let's all win. I'm gonna just win this. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. rise faster than everybody. And that's yeah. that's a that's a com completely different. Um, mentality mm. that I think people have and I could be wrong but I think in terms of like entrepreneurship I think there is like this 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 competition that also feeds off of like someone not doing better than me so sometimes it's yeah. like what can I do to keep everyone at bay to maintain some level of control where if you run it up like is there yeah. enough for all of us to win yeah yeah I think I think there's so much room. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's so much room for uh, for us all to win. It, I don't. I don't get too shy. I mean, I do think about how to be like considered the go-to person in the field. So, right in yeah. a, in a way, yeah. I am um, trying to out like compete. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I'm. If another like bottle shop was opening up. I don't think I would feel like, oh, this would just, that, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh, that, you know, yeah. then, then, then our town is known for having all these amazing stores, yeah. right? And like, it, it does better. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want any of these businesses to go out mm -hmm. around us because yeah. um, that's not good for anybody. No, no. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's just so much room, you so, know, we so. see yeah, other black coffee roasters and, and people will bring that to to us and they'd be like, oh, well, what do you think? And my dad's like, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. It's amazing. There's so much room for all of us. Yeah, I was yeah. Um, in LA this past week and got to you know, go and see some of the coffee shops that are owned by um, black folks. Mm. And oh, it, there's one down there that I love. Is it Haroon in, in, in Lamar no. Park? No, 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 it's- um, South, South south coffee no i feel like it's it's like called something like flowers it's like all purple and he has a florist next to it oh i didn't i've never heard of this one you gotta <sighs> you gotta shoot me the okay. details uh, oh man it's so beautiful oh i can't remember the name okay you're on the on the board mm -hmm. but yeah no like but you know knowing that other types of coffee roasters are out there um it now creates um 
a precedent. Um, nothing. Oh, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> nothing if I go this way, so I'm going to go this way. Um, yeah, the precedent that knowing that other businesses exist. Um, that was a strategic move. Yeah. <laughs> I needed to be able to, I mean, you've been scoring. I mean, we're only five points apart, but it's not personal. Just know that. <laughs> Fair. Um, What is it like being a woman working in the beverage space? Is it predominantly men? I, what, is, yeah. what is the space like? I'm going to take 20. Um, oh, that's such a big question. What is it like being a woman in, the bev in this beverage space? Yeah. Um, I think that there was a lot of times where I would feel really frustrated um, by being underestimated or not being seen. Mm -hmm. And I think more and more I'm okay with that. Sometimes I feel like that gives me an edge even because yeah. I'm like, um, I can see like this, this sales person came in the other day um, and sales reps oh man they, they come in a lot and that's been a really <laughs> interesting thing yeah. to navigate so i have this one guy who i'm cool with he he comes in all the time and we were just like kind of chatting side by side uh and then this other sales rep walks through the door and he's with a woman and uh they're from some brand that we carry and and they walked in and he just really didn't acknowledge me and he saw the other sales rep and he was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Is this your store? And da 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 And just like did not once acknowledge me, even though I'm standing directly behind yeah. the counter. And I just, and it's, I, in those moments, I could just watch, right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. This really allows me to have some insight. Yeah. Um, and then, and then the guy, he's just like, uh, no, this to answer your other question, this is not my store. Mm. Um, this is Jessica. And then the guy switches to me and he's like, oh, hello. He's like, you know, I've been reading so much about you, actually. And I was like, clearly you haven't. No, you and haven't. <laughs> because you yeah. don't even know, like, you thought that this was your old friend's store. Yeah. And, and, and then he, I don't even think he saw the lie come mm -hmm. out of his mouth. And um, so I have moments like that a lot. I think people will maybe, um, yeah, so... Those moments are interesting. Yeah. Um, I also think that like men in sales, or just that sales, because it's probably pretty male dominated too, have a certain way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to also tell another rep the other day, like, you know, we don't have to communicate like that, you know? Yeah. And the guy came in and he was like, hey, so I, I really like you guys. Uh, I know that you guys move a lot of this, so. Uh, I'm trying not to like give names. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, I know you move a lot of this. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a case deal. Like you, you buy these and I'll give you this. And, you know, because mm -hmm. I like you guys. And I was like, oh, OK. And in my mind, I'm like, well, the weather is changing. That thing is actually not going to start sell as much as it did in this warmer weather. I don't really need to buy all that. Yeah. And so uh, the next day I'm like, I just passed. And then two days later they come back and, and the, the woman, she's just like, yo, I really, really need you to buy this. Like, what can I do? Because I have to hit these numbers and da 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 um, And I just, like, told her, I was just like, you know, your boy super put me off the other day. Yeah. Um, and we'll get, because he made another comment about rum, which I'll talk to you about, too. Yeah. And I just told her, I was like, hey, like, you don't got to, like, do the sales sales yeah, thing with me. She was just transparent with you. I was like, I'll buy these cases because you need a solid. I'll yeah. totally do you a solid because we're two like yeah. people in this game. Like, yeah, I'll sell that eventually. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it, but like, yeah. and she was just like, thank you for that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, anytime. Man. Just like, just let's just talk, you yeah. know, and not, um, but that's the type of culture that is created, mm. right? Yeah. So like, bringing in the humility to be able to like 
just be honest and, and be like, hey, business needs to pick up for this particular this particular beverage and right. versus being like, oh, I'm gonna do like, yeah, you. I'm gonna do you a solid, and I was like, I'm buying what? from you. So like, this is like, do you? Yeah. It seems like you could use that being underestimated, and like, I think that's something that we as people of color experience a lot is being underestimated yeah. for like ideas and mm -hmm. being able to produce. Um, it seems like you could use that to your advantage too. Like oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think also now things are shifting. Mm -hmm. um, things are shifting so much that being a woman, being mm -hmm. a black woman, being a queer woman, yeah. um, these are these now becoming like these tokenized things uh, or qualities that, or yeah markers yeah. that um, companies really want to work yeah. work with mm -hmm. um, and so in that way I'm sometimes a little spotlighted too much yeah um, somebody wrote a piece about me and they were like she's queer and she's this and I'm like okay those are that has nothing to do with my knowledge of alcohol yeah. right yeah. that just happens to be who I am yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if you experienced this in February, but like sales go through the roof yeah. in February. Totally, people <laughs> you know? want to support you. Yeah, and so you know sometimes those, there's there's grants and there's opportunities that yeah. are specifically for women. So yeah, you know, it works it works in both ways. Yeah, like, um, I agree. I think it's important that we support. I I understand that typically those are like the high peaks for us yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. Um, so I try not to take that personal, mm -hmm. but I I feel a bit like yeah. Sometimes we can be tokenized, so I can I can relate For sure. to that. Uh, and I was having a conversation with Rolando, and mm -hmm. he's like one of my mentors that I talk to a lot. And it was a really good question because it you know we just kind of did this audit of ourselves, and he's just like, "What's special about you? Like, what makes you?" the best beverage shop in the Bay Area, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what you always need to be like, kind of like placing your mindset. Mm -hmm. And it's true, like, we are not the best because we're black owned and women owned and queer, like, yeah. kind of at the end of the day, that doesn't really show how the quality that my business is gonna be, right? Yeah. And so, so when I'm describing my business and why it's special, I really have to take those things out. Yeah. And then what do I have then? Yeah. What do I find most interesting about my business? Because yeah. I think what a lot of people find so interesting and so um, alluring is that it's like, you know, Corey and I are Oakland natives and all these things like that. But at, at the end of the day, like, who, sometimes who cares? Yeah. <laughs> who cares, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of people do not care. People yeah. in this neighborhood don't care. No. Um, yeah. And so we had to really think about that yeah. and think about how we are going to communicate that. Mm -hmm. um, I love that we have all these non-alcoholic things. Mm -hmm. I'm making a really big effort to curate this non-alcoholic section that's interesting and delicious and that feels as special as this like super rare bottle of mezcal yeah. that we'll drink. Um, that we have all around beverages, yeah. that we have, you know, this importance of coffee and tea and wine, mm -hmm. that we can hold all of these things up at the same time. Um, and, you know, our other guiding lights and principles about how we buy and how we source. Yeah. But it is important to kind of like step out of that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something I'm Not pulling away. On it. Yeah. yeah. Like focusing on the quality of mm -hmm. what you're creating and what you're offering and not so much so basing it on the um the societal factors that many of us focus on because yeah. of like the times that we're in and the times that we've always been in yeah. but i feel like yeah um i think people assume that you're not as good too yeah I think people sometimes feel like if you are black owned or if you are women owned, it's like, oh, that's cute. Let, let me let me support them. Yeah. Um, but there's this there's this kind of thing that you're doing it because it's the right thing to do, not mm -hmm. because it's also like the best place for you to shop and yeah. has your stuff. Yeah. Um, so totally. That's something I kind of work towards also. Yeah. I mean to to relate to that, I think like the game of dominoes is sometimes seen as that like it's me. it's yeah it's you. But I think we. 
it's it's under underestimated in other cultures where it's like seen as like oh they're just connecting dots and it's like <laughs> yeah but there's there's an intellect and there's strategy yeah. that's being played as yeah. we share stories and as we connect with one another um and i think when people see that they're like oh this this there's there's the beauty there um but remind like i have to remind myself like yeah it's not just some like board game it's right it's it's the space where I exchange with people. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are so in awe of it, though. Like yeah. when I, I told my marketing person that they're like, "Oh, I'm play dominoes," and she's like, "Oh my, you know how to play? <laughs> I've never played before." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh yeah." Yeah. Uh, I, but I got, I got a lot from ten. ten. Yeah, um, and there's that, but I think you know when I even when I. I think I talked about this in my last conversation with Monty, but like, I I pitch a similar kind of concept like this uh, at work, where I would sit down with people and kind of talk about the intersections of business and culture, um, and I wanted to use dominoes, and I think I got more of kind of like a blank stare from my oh. counterparts, but when I was able to put uh, the pen to pad and like share this idea with folks like yourselves, who people who I share ideas with, there was like this reception to it where it's like, oh, that, that would be interesting and be something I'd want to participate in. Um, and it wasn't seen as like, oh, this is just a game, but it's like, this is an interesting way to kind of showcase our culture um, with us having really um, deep, significant conversations like that's mm. that's something that I've always wanted to do in my other work but mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's very hard to translate that to those to, yeah. to those um, to those arenas mm. and I wonder if it's because I sometimes struggle to translate it or is it the fact that the, some folks just don't get it like like your job like my job we're like yeah, yeah. like if you like start a business like yeah, I want to start yeah, a bottle yeah. shop and somebody's like well we have liquor stores like why would yeah, I want to yeah. do that like yeah. it's it's a it's almost like I think it's intimidating to people. I think people have a very specific idea of what Domino's is. It's a, it's probably like some well, it might be some personality types because I feel like I feel like a big part of Domino's is the shit talking. Yeah. And people can get really uncomfortable yeah. with that, you yeah. know. Or have been like my uncle was watching us play at Red Bay one time, and he was just like, "Who are you?" And I was like, "Well, this is different. It's, it's yeah. at the table, you know." Yeah. Um, all right. So, are you guys gonna do it? Do what? Play dominoes. At work? Yeah, yeah I, I've taught I've taught my colleagues how to play, and they've been receptive to that. But I think, in terms of creating a space for dominoes like we are in terms of a lifestyle. That's five. Yes, that's five. Um, yeah, we're doing it. Like, we're yeah. doing it right now. Like, I, yeah. I, I'm not waiting on someone else to support the idea. Right. Um, it's really, in terms of my entrepreneurial journey, it's I'm going to go make that happen, and mm -hmm. I'm going to find the people that want to um, partner with me and, and want to collaborate. and. That's happening now. Yeah. Like, I'm at the at the point where I have that confidence, where I don't necessarily need to get validation from the outside world yeah. in order to make it happen. I'm I'm going to seed it myself, um, and the people that you know join me in that are going to we're going to create it together. So I feel like it's such a good thing to do with coworkers. It I mean, is. Everyone always needs something to do with their mm -hmm. hands. That yeah. they're not. You're not just like sitting one on one. Mm -hmm. um, so often we actually resort to drinking sometimes yeah. instead yeah. of playing games. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know how to be childlike in that way where we could just do activities. Yeah. To bond. Yeah. Um, and then too with strategy too, you could you could see how your team plays. Yeah. Right. Who likes to score big yeah. and who's kind of more timid? Who's a fast calculator yeah. I imagine that it's a, it's a really useful icebreaker yeah it has been and I've been in spaces with co-workers that they've actually enjoyed us playing um, but you know I think thinking about what we're doing in this space where um, we get to highlight so much that's happening in our in our culture mm -hmm. um, that doesn't always get to get to you don't get to highlight that being 
in a space where you're just working with your coworkers, like, hey, I want to be able to talk about this this bottle, um, this beverage that we're drinking, or I want to talk about your experiences. Like, how do you create that for mm -hmm. folks to be educated? Like, mm -hmm. and I think this is um, an opportunity that we're using in terms of the domino table is um, and using media to do that. I think we're in a different space and time where like conversations are being had mm -hmm. and people want to you know learn about things they want to watch things that are different um but as an entrepreneur i get to create that i don't have to do it you mm -hmm. know under somebody else's budget or as yeah. their team like yeah i and could partner with yeah. with someone and bring in a domino table like yeah. i don't have to be an employee of that place to bring in a domino table yeah so. i love i love the global domino program i think it was such a beautiful thing in oakland that when it was existing and like roving around <laughs> it was it was so wonderful and like you're it's a pretty like low impact setup right yeah like it's it just, is it's really easy to do it is um, it, it totally is yeah um yeah i mean that was that was like that was uh definitely a sad part in COVID. i was just like oh yeah we're not yeah uh, did you did you hurt from that or what was your feelings I think I had a, again, I think at that point I went into some reflection and really started to think about how I wanted to approach this. So I started to tap back into my creative spirit that helped me create these tables. And, you know, your dad helped me really uh, put this program together because he was like, he showed me like, hey, you could build the tables. And doing that. Um, this is 20. Yes. Damn. Um, I, I recognized that I had taken some time away from it and I was just running, running the domino program and putting mm -hmm. it out there. But with the time that we've had to be socially distant, I've been able to get more clarity in terms of what I wanted to do with dominoes. And this, mm -hmm. was, this is the manifestation of that, right? Like um, the energy I was putting into like, okay, I need to go set this up. But yeah, while it's, it's low stakes for me, mm -hmm. um, I've always had this idea in the back of my head. I had been sitting on this idea for three or four years. Yeah. And like, I, I think if things had kind of just played out the way that they were prior to um, the pandemic, I probably wouldn't be at this point where I'm creating this. But I think this last year, I think a lot of us hit the, had to hit the reset button in terms of how we wanted to approach things. And I think for yeah. an entrepreneur like myself, I was, rethinking how I wanted to, to create. So the Global Domino program evolved into like me putting the Uplifters brand on the domino sets, starting yeah. to think about the casing and doing all these new touches mm -hmm. that I think people responded well to. Like we were able to carry the domino sets here yeah. and like those started to produce partnerships and collaborations yeah. with folks. So still is. And you know, I've had co people come in and just buy the domino sets, nothing else, but they're just like, no, I want this domino set. And I put it in that beautiful <laughs> kit and everything. And I was like, you got to have this bottle of Uncle Nurse whiskey. Yeah. Glass of this. And they're like, no, I just want the set. I was like, cool. You and that, just have the set. Yeah. And that was something that made me realize like, oh, I now have something that is tangible for people to consume, aside from them consuming the experience that we were able to create with festivals and the domino tables at events. But it's like, oh, now people can walk away with this. And I get to focus on um, figuring out what a sales and distribution looks like, like for that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's been something that I've been able to focus on. Yeah. Um, and being more keen on the units Mm. And because I know I could put an event together, yeah. like that's easy now. Yeah, that's fun. But I think I was looking to challenge myself as an entrepreneur. Yeah. So, is there things that you are looking to challenge yourself now as an entrepreneur? Um, I mean, I already feel challenged. Yeah. <laughs> very much. Um, what are my challenges? Like, what are my challenges now? Yeah, I'm not trying oh, to challenge are, myself anymore. Yeah, than I like, already am. Yeah. Oh, you're not. You're not. Is there? Is, oh, there. I mean, I feel. I feel like I. Have, you feel like you're fully challenged right yes, now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I have lots of challenges right now. Yeah. Yeah. Is there something that you recognize that you need to work on, as a as an entrepreneur that's in partnership with, with another person? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I have to, the, the thing I really identified, um, I have so many ideas in my head and I'll be working on so many different things. And um, so I, I realized, you know, Cor Corey and I, we were having these kind of like um, weekly check-ins and we'll, and you know, they could just be as like simple as us going and having dinner and just being like, what were your successes this week? What were your losses? What mm -hmm. are you feeling stressed out about? Sometimes it's very like detailed about like things. Other times it's just like emotional. Um, but very much like having a child, we were putting them off because things came up and we're just trying to keep the store operating, right? Mm -hmm. And so we kind of just like, I we hadn't talked in a minute, like really kind of connected. And so we had to reprioritize that. And I was like, oh, okay. I feel like you don't know what I'm doing, like right. You you have no insight into like what my day feels like and all the things, and I have no idea what you're doing and what you are feeling. Um, and that's so important to just like have this full transparency mm -hmm. of like, here's the things I'm stressed out about. Here are the things I'm working towards, and how do you know we have alignment yeah. in them. Um, and also trying to communicate that to staff. Right. Yeah. Uh, Michael Bush has this really wonderful point of like, if you at the end of the day have to like ride in to um, to like do something at work, uh, if if it's only you that could save the day at work, you're not doing your job very well. That's and powerful. I just, yeah, and I think about that. Yeah, delegation right? is important. Just that you, yeah, you should not be the the thing that's yeah. holding it together. Yeah. Right. Um, you should really clearly communicate so that people can jump in and support you when needed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on, on that more of how to get things out of my, my head and how to um, allow people to support me in these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this job in particular and entrepreneurship is, is difficult in a lot of ways because you have to be good at so much, mm -hmm. right? Um, I wish I knew everything about Mescal. I would love if I knew everything about Mescal, yeah. but I can't. Yeah. I don't have the time to really like deep dive into it. I learn when I can and I, and I read and taste. Um, and I think that's people's expectation too mm -hmm. when they come in. Yeah. But it's like, and there's people that I meet who just like know so much. And sometimes that's hard because they'll be in the store and I'm like, oh, you know so much more than me and I'm yeah. going to tell you this. Right, Man. but I I can't just know about mezcal. I have to know about whiskey too, yeah. and wine, and this, yeah. and also about leases, yeah. and what a good lease looks like, and <laughs> also how to repair a window, and yeah. also what's wrong with my electrical, and when yeah. the plumbing goes wrong, and also about creating a four hundred one k package for our employees. Like, there's just so much yeah. that you have to you have to know a little about everything. Yeah, um, and so that that is one of the challenges right yeah. now. Are you are you finding ways to create like a roadmap to be able to do all those things, or is it just how like is, <laughs> is it is it is it the partnership that you create with your your business partner to say hey like I'll take this this half you take this half or we like are, is there yeah. is there a plan that you're putting in place? Uh, we're figuring that out. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think we're definitely we definitely have things that we are responsible for. Mm -hmm. That, that we that we keep separate but but often we can't be the sole decision makers on those things so mm. I have to know enough about what he's working on to give my input when he asks and vice versa yeah. right um, because these are big decisions that we're making yeah. so you kind of have to still know a little bit even if that other person is doing yeah. the deep dive um, yeah. you got to know what's going on on the table which is <laughs> <laughs> And you know, and then the other challenge too, and I don't, I, I'm curious on how you do this self-care, obviously, mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. buzzword of this past couple of years. Yeah. Um, and people often ask me, what are you doing for self-care? Yeah. For my birthday, I got like two massage gift certificates and like one of those massage things. Yeah, and so, like, you got the gun? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so I, I can tell my friends are like, yeah. she needs this. Um, and my, my friends are like, what are you doing for self-care? And I'm like, <coughs> not a lot. Yeah. Um, 
And then sometimes I'm like, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay for me to just like, grind so hard right now. Yeah. I was like, I could do that for a solid year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, to just like work really hard every day. Like, yeah. I think, yeah, it's not healthy to do that forever, but yeah. I think yeah. it's okay to do that. Yeah, it's definitely, right there are going to be moments you know? where you're like going to be pushing past like the midnight oil to get something done. For sure. Um, in terms of my, you know, self-care and... uh Ten. No, shit. Wait, right? No, it's no. ten. Yeah, you got ten. Oh, oh, oh. right. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, nice. I... So one of my things is I... Um, I tend... So Monday through Friday, I do wake up in the morning and work out. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a workout pod. Monday through Friday? Monday through Friday. You work out five days a week. Five days a week. Even if it's just for like 30 minutes. It's usually somewhere it's between yeah. 30 and 45 minutes. I used to be able to do an hour. But it's something I do with a group. Um, we have a pod. So I've been, well, during like the winter season, we were all meeting up um, virtually on Zoom. And mm -hmm. somebody would lead the workout from, the, from their home. And so we would all just hop on the screen and, and do the workout. So that's one of my, my forms of self-care. Um, I think learning to say, uh, nothing. that's nothing. Um, okay. I'm gonna take 15 and I'm oh. out, Domino. Oh, that um, hurt. Oh, it's with my small. Seven, that's five. Um, but yeah, I think working out, I think, one of the things that I recognize is you have to set uh, some some boundaries in terms of like personal life too. Like, um, I may not be able to hang out with my friends all the time, mm -hmm. so my self care is like knowing like I need to eat. So I like doing groceries mm -hmm. and like, luckily. Um, with someone who also shares that those values in my partner so like yeah partnership is important in a lot of like the self-care is like knowing what my strengths are the things that i don't like and like finding the balance so mm -hmm. taking vacations setting time for a vacation like yes. and doing that without feeling guilty about it right yeah like I, and that's something i've learned along the way that it's okay to take a break and reset mm -hmm. and so like you said, you could go hard for um, a period of time, but you can't sustain that. So, right. um, like just this last week, I took a vacation and mm -hmm. did some camping, mm -hmm. saw some saw some family, and that was what I needed to replenish myself. So, like yeah. now, I come back here and it's like I feel okay going into go, into grind mode again. Yeah. Um, and so I'll do that for a period of time, and then I'll reset again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, allowing yourself to play. I think yeah. my one of my uh, mantras that my grandpa uh, shared with me um, was like, he's always he used to say, save a little. Like he's always like, he's like one of those old school folks, like put money aside. Mm -hmm. But as of late, he's 92 now. So he's like, you'll never save more than you spend. So mm. enjoy it, yeah. right? <laughs> like, yeah. so I'm like, if I want to indulge in a bottle of something yeah. or, I want to eat out. I'm gonna do it yeah. in moderation, but yeah. I'm not so fixated on needing to um, keep reserve of everything. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing. I'm allowing myself a little bit of leeway to have mm -hmm. my humanity. Like I think yeah. that's something that I've learned um, along the way, and I think that's the same way I'm approaching entrepreneurship. Is like I'm not gonna get everything done. I have people that are helping um, me be better as a, a business person because I'm trusting them to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Like you said, if I'm stuck, if somebody, if I'm the one that's stuck with all of the knowledge and nobody else knows how to do it, I'm not doing a great job. Yeah. So, you know, it's the conversations like being able to ask somebody for help. So yeah. that's that's my self care is like being more vulnerable is mm -hmm. is one of the big things that I'm learning. Uh, as, as I get older is like, I need to be able to communicate when I'm able to do something and when I'm not able to do something. And so it's just those little things, like simple things. Um, but yeah, 
working out is one of the big ones. Yeah. It's it's my way for me to disconnect too. Like yeah. there'll be days in the week where I just jump off the computer for lunch and I go run the lake. Mm. And that's that's the way that I reset for the yeah. day. I'm gonna uh, start doing that. Yeah. And that's the thing we I, I think in terms of starting that, you know, there was the hard part of like building that momentum. Yeah. Um, like making it a habit. Yeah, making it a habit. But you know, you don't like. I wasn't working out every day to start. You know, like I started with like two days a week, and then I got to three. Yeah. And then I got to four, mm. and then I got to seven. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit, yeah. and then I was like, all right, I'm only going to be able to do five. And mm. like, I've been able to maintain the momentum, but. The way that I maintain that is because I have people around me that are helping mm -hmm. me do that. You know. Do you spend time meditating, or is that your kind of meditative? That is my meditation. I don't. I don't do much uh, meditation. I was trying it for mm -hmm. a while. Um, I also have been in. Ten. Uh, so I do a couple of things. Like I've been doing individual therapy for a couple of years mm -hmm. and so I have like sessions that I, I check in with somebody and I kind of do like a, a personal check-in mm -hmm. um, regularly so I, I've been it's not so much meditative where I'm by myself but it yeah. is like me being able to like check in with somebody and just kind of like express whatever it is that's going on for me yeah I um, mean that's been really helpful in terms of my self-care um, I, I got into a stretch when I was like meditating. I think I did it like for a month every day. And I came into work one time. This is when I was at Red Bay and my mm -hmm. coworker, they were like, you just have a wonderful calm <laughs> and glowiness about you today. Yeah. And I had really like had a good meditation that morning. I was like, oh shit, this shit works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I need, and every, I think about that often because they were like, your energy, you just, and I was like, yeah. Yeah. This, so you just reset before heading into. Yeah, it's true. Into a workspace. It's one of the things with working out in the morning, which made it easier, was like, just know that this is going to be the hardest thing that you do in the day. Right. Mm, that's a good way to think about yeah, it. Yeah. So it's like everything else from here is downhill. Yeah. Um, and that was that was helpful. Thank you. It's a it's a it's a we're you know we're tied actually. Are we really? Yeah, we're halfway at ninety five points. We got That's so funny because I really thought you were just gonna like blow me out of the water. No, I was like maybe he'll take it easy <laughs> on me because no, we well, you're, filmed, you're playing. Then we wouldn't. I haven't played in so long. You're a solid player. I wouldn't say that I'm doing. You're doing. Oh, now what am I going to do? I'm going to score on this. I'm going to take 10. Um, I was looking at your questions, mm -hmm. and one of them made me think, too. And I'm curious, like, it's like, maybe, like, where do you find that creative energy or yeah. something like that? Yeah. Um, and I woke up this morning, and I, and, I, and I had an idea, and I, like, wrote it down because I keep a pen and paper by my bed. Because yeah. I feel like I get so many ideas right in that. It's not the lucid dreaming, but it's like kind of probably right before the sun's coming up. So yeah, your body's like, like starting to, yeah, yeah, you're starting to wake up and you're starting to probably think about like the real things in life and like mm -hmm. coming out of dreamland. Yeah. I feel like in that space, I get so many ideas. Yeah. And so um, you have the notebook now and you've been jotting that down? Just in, in this in this moment, I woke up and I, I wrote down this idea because it felt so good. And then later when I woke up, I read it. And yeah. I was like, oh, this isn't that great of an idea. <laughs> but not every idea is great. Yeah. But I do feel often I get most of my ideas and, and some are wonderful and some yeah. are like, okay, maybe I'll revisit that or twerk it or something. Yeah. I, Tweak it. <laughs> yeah. Twerk it. Do you ever as in your creator like journey ever get that inertia but don't actually like was there a point in time where you weren't doing anything like i know that i get like a spark of an idea in the middle of the night but yeah. i don't get out of bed to do anything about I, it i i hope i really just repeat it a bunch of times and hope i'll <laughs> in the morning um but i dream in recipes often at night yeah and my girlfriend laughs at me because she's like you she's like you just think about food and drink so much i'm like oh yeah but i'll get like as i'm falling asleep i'll think about recipes and things that like will pair together and I'll, I feel like I've trained myself to remember them nice in the morning yeah um, but that's the time that I I find really 
great for all of that. On the creative energy, what are the things that you do to keep yourself grounded? Aside from like the meditative, like what are some of your, how do you not allow yourself to get too caught up in the moment of like mm. all the things that you're managing? Uh, I don't know. I, I really not, have not been doing a good job That's fair. of that of late. Yeah, yeah I've, um, I've been super caught up in work and just, and it's, and it's tough because I, it makes, I feel like emotionally I'm kind of up here a lot, mm -hmm. you know? I think the last time I saw you was um, the photo shoot mm -hmm. and that was like my birthday and then the photo shoot mm. and then we had like a covid scare mm -hmm. in my close circle and i and then i i noticed by the end of the week i was just like yeah. i just was like i never came down mm -hmm. um and it and it's scary because it can feel a little manic yeah. in some ways yeah. um and sometimes i have to remind myself like okay like mm -hmm. i'm not saving the world here yeah. do you know what yeah. I mean like <laughs> right. I'm not yeah. that important in what my business is like fine and yeah. like it'll it'll just be okay mm -hmm. um, but in the moment sometimes the stakes feel so high yeah. um, so I, I I'm trying to think about that to be honest I, I, I can't say like oh this is how I stay grounded because I don't feel like I've been very grounded mm. recently um, I have identified like just having quiet time yeah. Just having that time to like zone out mm -hmm. is so important. Yeah. Um, when I feel, I guess, the most grounded and when I feel good is probably just like when I'm at home and cooking and like yeah. kind of organizing putzing around my house. Yeah. So more of that. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely need, I would take some grounding tips <laughs> <laughs> for me for I sure. Mean, I don't know if I have all the grounding yeah. tips. I think in my in my experience, it's uh, being okay with making mistakes. That grounds me. Mm -hmm. um, so like not getting too caught up in like having to go through the mental exercise of like I fucked up and now mm. I have to like fix it. It's like all right, I messed up. Like, let's let's accept that, and then yeah. let's try to move forward. Like, so let's let's find a path forward. Um, yeah. I'm getting better at that, so that keeps me grounded. Like, I was listening to um, a podcast, and it was an interesting conversation where they were talking about like there was this young person talking about like the not having control and having to like not like any mistake you make now feels like it's uh. a grave. Like it's the end, mm. so. But there, I think what uh, it oh, was actually a conversation with. He was nineteen, 19 and like his, his dad to, is a yeah. is forty, um, and he's a rapper. And like then they were like you know like talking about it, but you know I think what grounded me in that conversation because I've also had that like what am I gonna be like in the next five years mm. like is and but recognizing like we're all winging it, that grounds me like yeah. nobody has it figured out. Yeah, and it's it's. It's one of those things that you say to yourself sometimes and you don't really believe it, but like I'm starting to believe that more. It's like, oh, my parents or my grandparents mm -hmm. or my loved ones, like they're all doing the best they can. Yeah. Jay-Z and Beyonce are all winging it, right? Like, <laughs> like some, some yeah. have, it, have, have more resources, like their resources and things, but like nobody has this all figured yeah. out. Yeah. Um, so that grounds me yeah. in, in knowing that like, we all have 24 hours in the day. Yeah. How are we using it? Mm -hmm. And we all got to put on our shoes. Right. One foot and at just a time. Like, accept it. <laughs> like when you just accept that you yeah. can't do anymore. Like, yeah. And I will say the one thing that grounds or at least helps um, that provides a, a security is, is planning. Yeah. That helps it's a like lot. Planning. You know, we, we met and we did our marketing calendar for like the next, I thought we were going to get to the end of the year, but yeah. we, it was so dense that we only got for the next three months. Yeah. But even that is such a load off. Yeah. Cause it's like, we don't have to just, then we don't have to take an ad stuff. Like yeah. we are like, okay, that's great. And then in my day too, when I'm feeling so overwhelmed by the amount of stuff, I'm like, I got to do three things today. Yeah. Let me just like, what are these like 
burning yeah. fire things and I just oh I do a lot of I'm a big list maker yeah I think that's and handwritten list too yeah I love handwritten. I like putting check boxes yeah. next to things and being see, able to exit off see I'm a outer oh see I'm an X mm -hmm. kind of like I have a box and I'm gonna put an X there mm -hmm. or check through it but yeah I think that's it and like you know you have your running list and you're not gonna get through all of it and you make that assessment in terms of what's a priority and what needs to get handled yeah. um, it's the same I mean back to Domino's it's like I have like I may have a shitty hand. I'm gonna try to get off as many points yeah. because I know I'm not gonna domino, and I want my opponent to it's get. It yeah, it's on you. Ah. Um, but I want my opponent to get not all of what's in my hand, so I need to work my way to a point where like yes, it's decent. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Now, see, would you have done it there? I probably would have because I'm going to score right now. Ah! <laughs> that's Cause see, and then the thing is, I'm like, don't open up more. Uh, see, and that's when I'm not dressing my gut because normally I'd be like, okay, let's yeah. open up the board more to more points. But and instead, I tried to be strategic and block you. And there you go. So, yeah, you should have trusted your intuition. Because all shit. Instead, I just <laughs> did that to myself. But you and might have something. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have five. And I have five with Domino. Yeah, okay. Well, you have five. Maybe. That is, that's okay. I'll take the little. Mm -hmm. You. It's a slow build. Mm -hmm. uh, you, How are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want anything else to drink? I'm trying to bribe you by getting something else to drink so I could also have something else to drink. Yeah. You want to take a quick break? Yeah. Okay. Okay.